guiding. We've all been there. It's an extremely frustrating thing at times. In fact, sometimes it can seem like a dark art. But there are a few simple things we can do to improve it. So I'd like to share with you today a few tips and tricks that I've learnt and hopefully help improve your guiding too. Hi everyone and welcome back to Astro Bloke, my name is Glenn. So today I want to talk about guiding and what we can do to improve it. I've recently been collaborating with Joe from joesastrophoto.com. If you don't know him, please check out the link above, which is uh, a link to his YouTube channel. He's got some really good videos. I was uh, remoted into Joe's observatory for a night of imaging. He kindly let me uh, photograph the cone nebula and Christmas tree cluster from his observatory in Colorado. While I was there we started talking about guiding and Joe had admitted that he hadn't really ever done much about it, he just left it because he was getting decent images he wasn't too worried but he was happy for any improvements that could be made. So Joe has an EQ6R Pro like I do, he runs his uh, mount through EQ Mod. So we made some changes to his uh, PH2, PHD2 guiding which helped smooth out his um, guide curve and uh, he was getting less corrections. What we also started to talk about was periodic error correction. So within most equatorial mount drives there's a worm drive and this can have errors. The periodic error correction will correct for these errors obviously it's specific for each mount so you need to record a pet curve for your mount once you have this you can then save that information in the mounts motors so you have a permanent periodic error correction built into your mount this should give you much better guiding so we've got a video now of part of the capturing of that evening and Joe and I are basically talking over the changes that we made to his setup. So hopefully there's some tips and tricks in there for you and you can improve your guiding too. Okay Glenn, so show us what you what you did to um, get PEC working on my mount. Yep, no worries. So on the EQ mod Joe, we just opened it up um, and you just push this plus sign here and you get all the way across Hang on a second, wait for me to catch up. And you got there, you can see there that your PEC is inactive. Right. Um, so if you just scroll through, it just rolls through all the settings and then you can get back to that. And it just, um, that's where you would actually start off by recording your uh, PEC curve, uh, which is your periodic uh, error correction. And then we can turn on auto PEC. Cool. Now, this will work with people with the EQ5 as well, Glenn? Uh, yeah, it worked with, uh, with, with with any mount that's got PEC training available on it. So if your mount has PEC training, uh, you, can, you, can, you can use this with it. So under the um, EQ mod, what we do... Um, so I'm going to look over there, make sure nothing's turned on. On the top there, we go to this spanner on the right. And it gives us options here. And we want the gain at the top here to be uh, 1 times 1. So, Glenn, why does the gain have to be on 1? Okay, it defaults to 0. And 1 is like the amount that the correction is going to be applied by the actual pet curve. So, mm -hmm. it needs to have a level of correction. And, and if you look in the any of the notes um, relating to this, they recommend that gain is times one so that's the okay. amount of correction that the uh, PEC the periodic error correction is going to apply to your guiding so you don't want it giving cool, cool. too much otherwise it will send you could send it uh, all over the place so um, I'm 
now set in how many cycles we're going to record now um they say you should do at least five which takes about 45 minutes but i'm going to set this at nine so that we get the maximum number of cycles uh i just think you know cool. we're doing it while we're doing a um an evening of imaging so the more information we've got the better the curve should be good oh that's good to know so you're looking at um a worm cycle on the eq6 being about eight minutes so we're going to have nine of those cool so yes so just over an hour yeah of... so while we're imaging this now will run and we've got it uh we we push record here you can stop the recording if you want obviously it's not active at the moment but you can see it says capturing and um so that's letting us know that it's capturing the the, the periodic errors now on the word so it's starting to build the curve yeah and it will start to record that and um when it's finished recording it will automatically start applying so what will happen is that peck that says inactive at the moment will become active and it will actually show you a curve at the top section of that graph there you've got the two lines the bottom lines being made at the moment the top line will show you the curve that it's produced and apply it okay joe so while that um the uh, auto peck is recording um i thought we'd have a look at your um PhD PhD two uh, settings because I noticed that the aggressiveness is uh, the default settings, isn't it? At uh, seventy and a hundred. That's that's correct. So I've made a few changes um, to help the guiding because I was getting uh, too many corrections, but uh, there is room for more, and I haven't played with them. So give me what you got. Okay, let's see what we can um, see what, if we can improve anything. Right, Joe. Just. Um... I think we got distracted by one of the subs coming through there. But um, I think what the uh, changes I made was I brought your aggressiveness on the RA down to about 60. <clears throat> and the deck we brought down to about 80%. That sounds correct, yeah. So... Um, now, tell the viewers, though, why that's uh, why we want to bring this down. Well, looking at your corrections there, if you look at the RA particularly, you can see that you've got a correction going in one direction and then it's correcting in the other direction and it keeps repeating that, which kind of indicates that you could be overcorrecting. Um, and so by bringing the aggressiveness down, you're not you're not pushing it past its uh, its point. Um I just find cool. uh, I found with experience that by bringing the aggressiveness down, it does tend to smooth everything out a lot better. Um, and again, it depends on your mount, but uh, and there's different arguments and schools of thought on the timing of your um, exposures on the guide camera. Um, so I, I noticed that you changed the exposures from two seconds to two and a half. Can yeah, sometimes it that can help. Um, it's two and a half seconds, so you're not it's not correcting too often. Um, give it a chance to sort of settle. Some people say that you can end up chasing the seeing if you do it too quick. There is also people that, um, especially with the Celestron AVX mount, is that they actually guide really quickly because they've got a different style of um, gearing, um, the way their mounts work, and they actually benefit from very, very short exposures, like half-second corrections, oh, and it okay. makes them guide better. I have tried that technique with the EQ6 and it went all over the place. <laughs> it just didn't work. <laughs> so I find between two and three seconds have worked best for me. Um, okay. I have pushed further and gone longer, but I've not seen any improvements. So I normally sit around two and a half. Um, and depending on the night, uh, if, if the guiding's not going well, I might try shorter. And, or I might try longer and I'll go down to two or I'll go up to three. If there's an improvement with either of them, I'll stick with that. If I don't see any change, I'll stay around two and a half. That's what I generally do. Okay. So you make like half second adjustments? Yeah, it doesn't really need a lot more than that. And um, 
the other thing that I do as well, um, if I feel that my guiding is not going as well as I want it to be, um, it could be down to bad seeing, but what I'll do is I'll run a guide assistant. Um, and one of the things that um, I was advised with the guide assistant by somebody that I know that does really, really good guiding, which is um, you must let the guide assistant run for at least a complete worm cycle. So you're looking at a minimum of eight minutes, but eight to 10 minutes and then run the, and then let the guide assist do its thing. If you do it with the minimum and that's two for, minutes. That's for the EQ6, right? Yeah, but if you do it's it with the minimum minutes. of two minutes, which it suggests, I don't think you're getting a, a, as good a, as good a, oh, good. Um, an assist as it can give you. So this... Okay, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I found that the results have been better if you do it that way. You can see at the top there on that EQ mod, Joe, that uh, curve is slowly building. You can see it getting bigger on the... Uh, on that bottom graph yeah so looking at that now that that does seem to have um, flattened out the curve a little bit to what it was doing earlier the corrections don't seem to be as, as aggressive right yeah and it the looks numbers a, lot look a little bit better so that's that's good I think the um, the multi-star guiding has been a, a big a big improvement with phd2 um it's still, oh yeah i love it is it's it still development though it's not the actual um Correct, release yeah and, and i normally don't do development software as you could tell with uh, my version of nina but uh in this case i yeah it's worth it because of the the multi-star guiding yeah, I think definitely in the UK where we get quite a bit of humidity and the seeing can be quite poor, it's really it really does help us quite a bit. Okay, Joe, so that recording is just about to come up and there's your pet curve. Cool. Yeah, that looks nice. That I think that looks smooth from um, ones that I've seen before. And, and if you look here, you can see it says correcting. And, and then under your uh, guiding... It, rather than it just saying side reel, it says side reel and peck. Nice. Do you say side so, reel or cider reel? Cider reel. <laughs> I, I usually say sidereal. Sidereal, that's the one. Yeah. Is that a bit like yeah. aluminum? <laughs> Aluminium? Hey, yeah, exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't actually know if it's sidereal or side reel. I don't. Really, I don't. Either, I really don't to be honest know. with you, I always say sidereal, um, because I hear other people say well, it, it that way. Well, it's that plus peck, as you can see there. So now you know that the auto peck is <laughs> uh, is running, and so, um, so let me ask you: Will will this save now? Is this um, what they call um, permanent okay, peck? Yes, oh. it, it's there. Um, but the only thing with the auto peck is that if you do not park your mount at the end of your session you'll lose it it won't remember oh. it oh so well is there a way to make it permanent yes there is. yes there definitely is and i'll 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 um i'll go and show you i'll show you that i'll show you that now joe i'll go to that in a second oh awesome so when you're watching this you'll see that um there's a line that moves along the peck as it's as it's doing its corrections so that's saved in eq mod but it's not your mount hasn't got that saved into the motors, the motor sort of uh, uh, boards. So what we're going to do is there's a there's a process we can go through to actually transfer this pet curve into the motor boards. Okay. Now before I, okay. I, I show that there is another thing that people can do. Um, you can just trans if you've got a nice curve here. Uh, you can just transfer that straight across and make it a permanent peck. Um, the other thing that you can do is there's a program called Peck Prep that you can download from the EQ Mod site. And what that allows you to do is to actually, uh, if you record several auto pecks, you can load them all in. And what it will do is it will average them out and make you a, a, a smooth curve made of an average of all the curves you've got oh nice so if you feel like the curve you've got is not very you know it's got a lot of move a lot of 
big errors in it or it doesn't look very smooth you can put them all together it will average them out and give you a nice smooth curve and then you oh, can load good. that and you can make that your permanent pec um i haven't done that i feel that my pec curve is quite smooth so i've used that and as i say it has improved my guiding looking at your phd2 now with the pec operating as well it seems to have settled right down there and you're not oh, having hardly really any good. ra corrections or certainly not to the level that you were having earlier I, and I'm, I'm dying to test it out unfortunately we've had clouds for the last two weeks but i want to get some uh, 20 minute subs and yeah well with your the lovely dark skies they're going to look amazing definitely okay joe so what i've done here is i've just opened up large the um eq mod just by clicking on the the spanner at the top there with the three arrows um, and what we're going to be concentrating on is on the far right hand side the development testing area and this is where we can take our auto pec and make it a permanent pec and oh, cool. so that the curve gets recorded to the motor boards on your actual mount and that way if you even forget to uh, park your mount or you have a you know power cut or you turn it off accidentally or whatever you will not lose your pet curve it'll always be recorded cool. and, and and saved okay that sounds perfect that's exactly what i want to do so we've got the auto pet uh, saved so if we click on the uh tracking there i'll just uh get everything up here there's my auto pet curve and i click on the 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 the, the tracking there you get cider reel and uh pec so it's it's running now you don't need to do this uh, at night while imaging or anything you can do this in the daytime this bit so anyone can do this at any time so come across here and well, you click on know. record pec and um, what will happen now is that the uh, light on your mount will go from a solid uh, red light to a flashing single light flashing on and off and what that's doing is the um the mount is waiting for the worm drive to be synced with the curve that's on on the auto pec so it needs to be in sync now that can take uh one maybe two cycles so that could be anything up to 16 minutes sometimes it can be quick it just depends on your luck of where the worm drive is and where your pec curve is on the auto pec okay so the sine wave that's on there is an eight minute yes wave yeah about eight minutes for a cycle on an eq6r pro and it needs it needs one to two cycles for it to sync up and line up and then once that happens it will start recording if you want to know what's going on if you press this refresh button joe you can see there it's telling us that the ppec the permanent periodic error correction is in training oh cool okay okay and if you look at the top graph on the left hand side that says it's correcting with the gain of one that was the thing we set when we did the auto pec you'll notice that right. in a moment there will be another line will appear and that means that it's it's picked up where the worm is and synced with the curve and it's starting to record the pec curve across into oh, the yep, there and there it goes there can you see it's divided the it's got another line now yeah and now that will run a whole worm cycle but what it's doing is it's putting that pec curve into the motors of the mount so oh, it'll be a permanent okay. pec so it's recording that permanent pec now and you can tell it's doing that by if you look at your mount light now it goes from a flashing on and off single to two flashes and then a pause two flashes then a pause so the red light flashes twice okay. and then that lets you know it's recording so it's just coming to the end of its recording now okay and it's all gone so that means now it's done the recording when you fire up uh your eq mod 
to start your guiding and you and you go down to your tracking you would open this up and just make sure enable PPEC is ticked and then when you start guiding that should come up with PPEC is on and your mount should have a uh, the red light should be flashing three times cool okay. so once you've got that you know yeah. that the PPEC is working okay Nice. And that's it. The reason why that's jumping around at the moment is because I think I was actually parking the mount to uh, turn everything off and turn it back on again. So, uh, sure. please, don't, anybody that's watching this, don't think that's what yours has got to do. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you, Glenn, what should one expect to get after they've turned on pack and after they've... Um fine-tuned their guiding well i know i know the... people's opinions differ it does depend upon your uh, focal length because obviously the wider field of view you are the more forgiving it is but good guiding is still really important because the the better your guiding is the tighter your stars are going to be absolutely if your guiding's a bit off you might still get round stars but they're going to be a bit bloated um you know because of the because of the movement um see I know, and I, I didn't realize that before um until we started talking about all this yeah. and and it, i think i don't think other people realize that either that um you know they're getting round stars and 10 minute subs and they think that you know that's what, what it should look like but it, it it in fact can look even better yeah you can, you you can definitely this. improve the image a lot and also i mean being in the uk with the humidity and the seeing which can sometimes be poor and i live near the coast as well um good guiding you know it was something that i had to work on a little bit because um it could be affected quite dramatically by the seeing so it was uh, best to have it as good as you could make it really um, but uh, I know out of the box they say that the EQ6R Pro is sort of 0 0.7 to 0 0.9 but um, yeah I mean uh, I've always felt that as long as you're be below one arc second you should be okay obviously the best you can make your numbers it's not going to hurt um, sure sure so uh, but I've do you want to show the that... viewers do you want to show our audience where, where we're talking the numbers okay we're joe i've so just Glenn... um just very quickly called up phd2 i've got it on a, a simulator oh, cool. but it's not actually guiding at the moment but i just thought it would be a good way of showing the areas that we change the numbers on oh nice yeah it's a lot larger on the screen yeah so you yeah. had the default i think you had yours on 19 the actual uh minimum movement uh area which i think you'd got from a guide assist uh before yeah but on the uh ra aggressive uh in this we, we 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 dialed that down to 60 and we dialed the deck and you can either click it or type it in down to 80 and we found mm -hmm. it gave us a much smoother curve and the number that much we're really uh, interested in is this one here the total so this is your ra and your right. deck errors and this is your total and this is the one not the numbers here we have a number in brackets at the end and it's that one that you want to look at that's the one that shows you like the one arc second and then right and then you want and, that and before below one so anything yes, below one. and before you made the adjustments i was sitting at uh, one point um zero nine up to 1.25 okay, yeah. and after you made the adjustments it had dropped all the way to 0. 0.6 and the peck training hadn't even finished yet okay so that's i mean as you can see there 0. 0.6 that's 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 like half the errors isn't it really if you look at it that way yeah you know you're getting your your, your guiding is much tighter and you should show in your images that your stars should be less bloated i know that you were getting round stars you weren't getting egg shaped stars or streaks or anything so the guiding right. was good enough but you know any improvement is but now help. it's even better yeah definitely so and it, you could see it in the hfr as well um in nina will report the hfr to you and it actually dropped that hfr well, that, so that's, that's 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 perfect and, and basically that's yeah. that's kind of some of the tips that you can go along there's a there's lots of big threads on uh, guiding and and all the different different things, but um, 
they're the sort of simple changes that you can make and I think they all do make a difference. They've certainly helped my guiding, so yeah, it's, uh, if it can help yours, I'm, I'm happy to share it and I'm, I'm glad it seems to have made an improvement. Oh, much better, and that's why I want to share it to my audience, and, yep, and I'm sure you want to share it to your audience. And and it'd be nice um, if you want to leave anything in the um, in the comments below too. Uh, and if you don't understand some of the um, settings that we've made in this video, uh, please ask um, down in the comments. Well, what I'll we'll do, Joe, is try and in, in the comments at the bottom, I'll put some links to the uh, to EQ mod, all the all the links to Peck Prep. And, yep. and, that, and then I, I, I'll also type out a, a, a simple stages of how to get your auto peck and then how to convert that across to your permanent peck so people can read it as well. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Well, hopefully it's helped. Yeah. I, I hope we've helped a lot of people. It's helped me. And I've already got better images for it. Now, if I could just get some clear nights. I could put it to use. Yeah, tell me about it. This this background <laughs> isn't real. <laughs> Unfortunately, a real background would just be a very grey, cloudy thing. Um, not as interesting to look at. So, uh, yeah. 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 Cool. cool. Thanks, Glenn. You're welcome. Hi, thank you for making it towards the end of the video. I really hope that the experiences that Joe and I had and the tips and tricks that we've uh, shared help you. If it improves your guiding, then I'm really pleased. If you have any questions, please pop them in the comment section below. I will do everything I can to answer them. I'm not an expert, but I do like to share what I have learned. And if it helps you, then, well, that's all good. Anyway, I'd love to wish you all clear skies and hope to see you again soon.